Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of R3 Stem Cell. Today's topic is stem cell therapy for wound healing. Now, wound healing is a highly orchestrated event. You have three phases of inflammation, proliferation, and maturation. These all involve significant new blood vessel formation, growth factors coming into the area, a lot of oxygen and nutrients. The cost of chronic wounds exceed $25 billion a year. And this may result from diabetes, obesity, malnutrition, alcoholism, all of these can affect this highly orchestrated event. For instance, they might not allow new blood vessels to form, which can really stall the wound healing. Now, traditional treatment of non-healing wounds um, include addressing the systemic factors like blood sugars for diabetes, local wound care with dressing changes and possibly a debridement, antibiotics, uh, when conservative therapy fails, maybe a, a flap or a tissue graft, uh, the outcomes have been moderate, um, to say the least. Surgery is often not tolerated. Every 30 seconds, an American with diabetes has to have a foot amputation due to neuropathy. Bottom line is, we can do better. And we are doing better with regenerative treatments, which I'll talk about in a second. The key is getting the wounds to close so that infection can be fought off um, as the wound heals. So here's a long list of the autographs, allografts, and biologic substances that have been used for decades for non-healing wounds. Some work well. Now you still have the issue with uh, blood vessel formation limitations, donor site morbidity, and rejection issues. So in the latter half of the 20th century, nat natural amniotic membrane began to be used as a wound covering. Beginning in the 1960s through the end of the 20th century was treatment for diabetic ulcers, venous stasis ulcers, uh, various post-surgical, post-traumatic wound dehiscence issues. But there was problems with sourcing the amniotic and processing it um, until about 2006 when a lot of that stuff began to be uh, regulated better. So when it comes to amniotic fluid-derived stem cells, the question is, can we employ cells that are beneficial to wound healing but may be immunoprivileged despite originating from an allogeneic source? Um, so amniotic fluid cells have multipotency, they have the ability to proliferate, they lack immunogenicity, so they don't cause a rejection reaction, they have immunomodulatory activity, so if it's too much inflammation or whatnot, they can modulate that. Uh, these characteristics have made amniotic fluid stem cells a prime target for accelerating wound healing in adults. They secrete a lot of growth factors that help with skin regeneration and new blood vessel formation, suggesting that they can augment wound healing. So a concise review in 2012 uh, showed the beneficial effect of exogenous, from outside the body, mesenchymal stem cells on wound healing was observed in animal models and in some human clinical cases. They've been successfully used to treat chronic wounds and stimulate healing processes that have just been stalled. Um, and recent studies show that human placental membranes are a rich source of stem cells for tissue regeneration and repair. Here's a study uh, out of 2016, Wound Journal, looking, uh, randomizing dehydrated amniotic membrane allograft compared to the standard of care. 100 patients, the proportion of wounds achieving complete closure within the three-month th study period were 73% with aplograph, 97% for the dehydrated amniotic product, and only 51% for standard wound care. The cost of treatment show, was shown to be four times lower with the amniotic membrane product. So this is a dehydrated product that doesn't actually have any live stem cells in it. It just has a ton of growth factors in it um, and the ability to call in the body's own stem cells. But look at those results. Here's another study that was multicenter and randomized looking at the dehydrated amnion product versus multilayer compression therapy for venous leg ulcers. This was 84 patients, 62% in the dehydrated amniotic group, and a third in the control group showed greater than 40% wound closure at four weeks. So like twice as many in the amniotic group showed a lot of closure. After a month, wounds treated with allograft had reduced in size by 48% on average compared with only 19% for the control group. So here's another study out of the Wound Journal that compared uh, dehydrated amniotic um, versus standard of care um, versus aplograph. 65 randomized patients, those in the epifix group, achieved complete wound closure with, in four and six weeks 
was uh, 85% at four weeks, complete closures, 95% at six weeks. And this was significantly higher than for those receiving either the aplograph, which is 35 and 45%, or the standard of care treatment, 30 and 35%. So over double the amount of complete wound closure was seen. The median time to complete healing was significantly faster with Epifix, 13 days, compared to aplograph or standard of care, which were both 49 days. So oh, about three times as long, three plus times as long. In conclusion, the treatment for diabetic wounds and venous leg ulcers with amniotic stem cells have now been shown to definitively to work exceptionally well compared with existing standard of care treatments. There are actually codes now um, for Medicare that you can use when uh, someone is doing wound care with dehydrated amniotic product for diabetic ulcers. The dehydrated products, as I mentioned, they don't even have live cells and they work great. R3 truly wants to make a difference in patients' lives by helping them avoid surgery and remain as active as desired and prevent amputations. Our affiliated centers of excellence are located nationwide and offer first-rate regenerative treatments. So visit us today at r3stemcell.com or simply call us at 844-GET-STEM. Thank you for watching.